This is a 1930 Bentley, and it's got a big old secret under the bullnet. This V12 airplane engine pumps out 650 horsepower and it displaces 27 liters. That's this many sodas. And this is the W12 Continental GT. It makes the same 650 horsepower and it only displaces six tiny liters. Well, today we're gonna find out what it's like to drive this 100 year old behemoth and why it's possible to get the same amount of power today on a much smaller scale. How can so much less volume make the same horsepower? All right, I'm gonna give it a little throttle. Hang on, everybody. <laughs> and at the very end, Jay promised us that we could drag race. No, no, I said if you scratch it, I would drag you behind it. Sounds like a maybe. Welcome to Donut. This is the engine that's inside the 27 liter Bentley. It's the Rolls-Royce Merlin, and if you can't tell by the huge propeller, it was built to be inside planes. Holy crap. Ah. Whoa. So it's got its own trailer. Yeah. Look at this beast. Just this massive engine. We were turning out one of these an hour. Germans couldn't shoot them down fast enough. That was American manufacturing back in the day. Most big high horsepower engines we see on this channel are built to push the boundaries of motorsports or are extreme examples of people building overpowered cars for poops and giggles. But this engine and its insane displacement was built out of necessity. So uh, I got one question. How do we turn this thing on? Left mag, right mag, watch out. I haven't been this nervous for somebody else to start an engine in a long time. Oh, oh. 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 I can't hold it any longer! We got a ball, Captain! In World War II, the Americans needed an engine to keep up with the planes coming out of Germany. So their answer was the Merlin. They put this thing in the P-51 Mustang, which allowed it to get up to 400 miles an hour. And it's one of the reasons we won the war was because of this engine right here. Amazing. Holy crap. <laughs> they used to yeah. use these for air raid sirens. How do you prevent hair loss? Jeez. Well, today's sponsor, Keeps, makes hair loss prevention easy by shipping your hair loss medication directly to your door at about half the cost of a traditional pharmacy. Delivered right to your front door. Keeps medical providers will help select the right products and treatments for your specific conditions and hair goals, all without ever visiting an office or pharmacy. That's homegrown hair, baby. Whether you're looking to prevent hair loss, stimulate growth, or just take better care of those follicles, hair loss stops with Keeps. Hair loss stops with Keeps. I already said that! Go to keeps.com slash donut media and get a special offer today. Click that link below, baby. The giant displacement of this engine is a huge reason for its top speed, but these massive aero engines were also equipped with a supercharger, giving the aviation versions of the Merlin over 1,200 horsepower. This is a supercharger, and the cool thing about it, it's a two-speed supercharger. As you're going higher, higher up in the air, because this is on a plane, the air thins out. When that air thins out, you need to put more in there, so you switch into a second gear, that spins faster, sucks more air in, allows you to make more power while you're up in the sky. Superchargers were created and refined by the aviation industry in order to push more air into the engine at high altitudes where the air is less dense. Now this stretched out Bentley that we'll be driving soon actually doesn't have a supercharger. And that's because this engine was actually pulled from a friggin' tank. So this engine is naturally aspirated, which is why we get that 650 horsepower figure, which begs the question, how can something so much more compact like that W12 produce as much power as this humongous engine at almost a quarter of the displacement? Well, in order to understand the power and efficiency of this 21st century machine, let's first talk about the engineering of the 1940s that went into creating this displacement monster. 
Now the Merlin was designed to be in a plane. So without the limitations of space in an automobile, the engineers were able to ramp up the size of everything to produce those 27 liters. It's also important to note that these things were designed to be shot at. So nearly everything in this engine, apart from the aluminum alloy heads, is built from steel or a form of steel alloy. And it's built <laughs> This thing also requires a whopping 17 gallons of oil to operate. And all those parts add up to an engine that weighs about 35 100 pounds. Jer, it is hilarious how massive this car is, but how tiny every seating position is. Yeah. Maybe people were way shorter in the 30s. Now the engineering behind this engine is obviously incredible, but when you start to think about all the forces required to move those heavy internals, you'll start to understand the inefficiency and limits of an engine like this. So in order for this engine to be put in this chassis, this Bentley had to be stretched. Yeah, 18 foot on the money. Pretty long. Let's just look at the length of this engine. Dude, we got five and a half half feet of boldness space. That's a lot of engine. This isn't actually a 1930 Bentley. This is right. fully custom. This is an amazing build. It's crazy that anybody even underwent this project. Yeah. It's like insane right. and it's really well done. The Merlin Bentley is an impressive build with a ludicrous engine. So how come the W12 is just as powerful at less than half the size? Now the W12 on the other hand displaces six liters but puts down the same power as the Merlin. Yeah, if you're not familiar with the W12 engine, it's essentially two VRC six engines mated together to a single crankshaft. Jerry did a whole episode on the W12 on bumper to bumper. Bentleys are known for being smooth riding cars, but V12s are known as being very inherently balanced smooth engines. So we figured, why don't we put this to the test by using a stack of coins that we've super glued together. I know that's illegal in all 59 states, but I don't care, I didn't do it. I'm gonna take these coins, I'm gonna put it right on the center of this engine, and Joby's gonna start it up and see if it moves. This engine is comprised of 294 individual elements, each of which have been developed with over 100 years of trial and error and with today's modern technology to be as lightweight and efficient as possible. Modern electronics, more efficient. It only weighs 540 pounds compared to 3,500 pounds. So we've got the same amount of cylinders, but the pistons are so much smaller. On that thing, you know what the bore is? Probably five inches? Five and a half. Do you know what the stroke is of that? Six inches. Five and a half inches by six inches. That's basically like a coffee can. And that's a lot of weight to sling around. Right, modern day bores, you're looking around the three and a half inch range, which my girlfriend says is perfectly fine. <laughs> so the Merlin has raw power while the W12 has modern engineering on its side. But the only real way to see the difference between them is to take them out on the road. Well, what you have here is an airplane engine that was used in a tank, and now it's used in a car. Now, how much torque does this engine make? Well over a 1,000 foot-pounds. Horsepower sells cars, torque wins races. This engine is meant to move an 80-ton tank. Don't forget, it's very understressed. It's not moving 80 tons. It's also got power steering, which makes it a little easier. Yeah, it seems strong. like it's got pretty good road manners, considering what it is. Would you like to give it a shot? I would love to. OK, so what are we doing? Pull it back one click. Okay, pull this up, one click. There you go. Okay. We're in drive. All right, I'm going to give it a little throttle. <laughs> Jay, this is crazy. Oh my God, the front end is a mile away. It feels humongous. It feels like I'm driving a country. I don't like that my head is the tallest thing on this thing. You're the roll bar. <laughs> I know. The big Bentley is a trip, but the more you drive it, the more you notice the shortcomings of such a massive engine. It's so visceral. I mean, the noises it makes and the feeling you get, kind of feels like you're driving an airplane. The sheer weight of the Merlin works against its own power. It definitely revs harder than the modern engine, but it makes for a rougher ride. Even at 55, it feels terrifying to drive. Another corner coming up. Hang on, everybody. <laughs> I like this stuff because it's more involving. You don't know if you're going to make it. You can always get home in a modern car. The thing with planes was speed. 
to climb, you need octane, you need more power. It's the last of the great piston engines. The jets came in right after this. They're always saying the phrase, there's no replacement for displacement. Well, that's kind of been replaced now. Engines have become so efficient. When the Mustang came out in 65, it had 271 horsepower on the hypo version. Now, when you get the four-cylinder economy Mustang, it's got 306 horsepower. It's just a matter of doing it more efficiently. All right, let's take this new Bentley for a ride. Ooh. All right. Welcome to my Bentley. Yeah, this is nice. This is the new Continental GT convertible, as you may be able to tell. This thing is beautiful. Yeah. It's a statement piece, yep. but it's also pretty quick. Let's feel it. It's a 5,400 pound car. To be able to move like that takes some serious oomph. Engine makes a lot of horsepower, which is cool. But one of the things this modern Bentley can't hold a candle to compared to that older Merlin engine is the amount of torque it produces. So this might be faster, but if you were to do a little tug of war between the two, I think this one would lose heavily. This thing makes about 600 plus foot pounds of torque. The Merlin, makes 1,200 foot-pounds, almost double. And the reason it can do that is obviously it's 27 liters. You're getting a lot, a, of displacement. Of, a lot of displacement that allows you to make a lot of torque. So these two have the same amount of horsepower and horsepower pretty much tells you the amount of work your engine can do over a period of time. Whereas torque tells you how much force you can get in an instant. As soon as that piston gets pushed down by the compression, it's creating a force and that right. torque is what you feel. Now, one thing with a smaller engine like this, it's never gonna have as much torque as a 27 liter engine, just never will. No Are you problem. saying there's no replacement for <laughs> displacement? Yes, the physics of it aren't going to change just because you want it to, Joe. Okay. Yeah. All right. yeah. And one of the limiting factors of an engine that big, making that much torque, is that they don't spin very fast. Right, that's a lot of mass to get up to speed. So if you have big pistons with big bores, you create a lot of torque, but when you start getting higher up in the RPMs, it's harder and harder to spin that all that reciprocating mass. Without it coming apart. Without it coming apart, exactly. Engines like these, they make up for it by having lighter internal components. Everything is more efficient. It's physics, baby. I didn't invent it. Einstein did. You do sort of replace that displacement with the turbochargers, sure. but that's through a lot of effort and years and years of development. To get as much torque out of this engine as it makes, which is almost 700 foot-pounds, right. you got to work for it. You got to add some turbos, you got to put some smart thinking into it, and that's what they've done here. I mean, you should see the factory, the facility that this basically comes out of. It's state of the art. The Merlin engine is 100 years old, basically, at this wow. point. Those huge torque figures are are just a part of a big displacement engine. We've come a long way, haven't we? We have. But the real question, which one would you take? The Merlin. <laughs> <laughs> I think the Merlin on the stand is the coolest party trick you could ever do. <laughs> well, Mr. Leno, thank you so much. Oh, no, yeah, guys, you're welcome anytime. Yeah. Come on by, we've got plenty of stuff to play yeah. with. Yeah, so check out Jay on his channel. Follow us here at Donut at Donut Media. Follow me at Jeremiah Burton. Follow him at Zach Joe. You got an Instagram? Somewhere. <laughs> You'll find Just it. Just Google Jay Leno. You got it. <laughs> Bye for now.